Jill, what are you doing? We need to start the show. Esme's already here. I'm just putting some finishing touches to the set. Um, can you just give us a minute? No, not really. We need to start now. Oh, can you just do it without me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is Lionesses Down Under. Connected by EE. Roll the VT. <laughs> Welcome back to Lionesses Down Under, connected by EE. Welcome, Esme. Do you like our new home? I love it. It's stunning. So well, nice. we'll be talking about more about that in a second. But of course, here on the show, we want you to get involved as well. Any messages of support, any messages for Esme, get in touch and make sure you use the hashtag Lionesses Down Under. We'll be reading out your favourite ones. So make sure you get typing. We'll want to read your questions. Yeah. Now, yesterday we moved to Terrigal, which will be England's base camp for the rest of the tournament. And we just want to acknowledge the dark and young people as the traditional custodians of the land on which we're filming our show today. We'd like to begin the show by paying our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So Esme, welcome. How are you settling into your new digs? I really like it, to be honest. We've had a little bit of downtime today, so it's been nice to kind of get out and have a little bit of a wander around. It's so lovely at the beach, yeah. although the water looks a little bit cold and <laughs> choppy. I heard it smashing against the rocks last night. I couldn't, could barely sleep. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is it. I mean, look at it. It looks absolutely amazing. We got a sneak peek, all right, because we were here yesterday about 20 minutes before you, so we ran straight in and wanted to see it all. But everything you've got in there, I mean, even down to this, you've got photos, you've got quotes, you've got everything that you need to get the, the team all together. Yeah, the detail is amazing. Oh. When we all walked in yesterday, we were all kind of necks hurting from just gazing round, jaws on the floor. So, so nice. I love the little book corner. They've got some great books in there. I think the darts board and table tennis have already been put to lots of use. And there's little like arts and crafts things as well. It's just so cute. We've literally got everything we need. Oh, do you know, I was actually the first person to throw a dart. I snuck into... Were you that one that missed the board then? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been, might have been me. But there is actually a room called the Scott Relaxation Room. And in the Euros, there was the Scott Room. And I was absolutely buzzing, but it was actually Alex Scott's room. So Oh, no um, way. I thought it was named after yeah, you, no, to be honest. But I've actually got a room this time. This oh, it time is yours. Got a, yeah. That is your room. room. We made sure. I mean, here's you playing darts. Talk us through that because you were so close to a bullseye. I was so close. I just kept going three more, three more. And then I was like, right, I'll end on that one. I'll go to bed now <laughs> tried again today i did get it in today but it took a fair few more attempts oh, did anyone capture it did we get any behind the scenes my memory did my memory did it's all up here <laughs> all right well if we didn't get any video it didn't happen all right oh, so we need to see that isn't it? all right now people have been getting in touch already okay questions for you so we'll get straight into those megan o'hagan got in touch to ask how do you and the squad relax between training You've just seen that room there. The reading one, is that where you'll we'll find you throughout the rest of this tournament? Yeah, I have been working my way through a book, to be fair. I've finished it now, doing a bit of uni work. But I think the most popular thing will be the table tennis. And also, we've enjoyed just watching the other games. Like, there's a big screen and stuff um, in there with beanbags and everything. So we'll probably all just get together and watch the other games that are going on. Because they kind of go one after the other throughout the day, don't they? So it's quite nice to kind of just relax and have a laugh and watch a bit of football. I'm not jealous. We're in our new studio anyway, so we can watch it in here, all right? We might not be in the Scott room, but we're in the Walker room right here, OK? I've christened this one, all right? Can you just name that just then? Literally, literally. Jill's can you not confirm? Impressed. Yeah, we'll confirm that. There we'll we give go. them that one. Love it. Right, well, Gracie also got in touch on Instagram with a question that I have to ask you, all right? She says, if you had a koala, what would you name it? I think Jill is a great name, to be honest. That's what Gracie says, all right? She Jill thinks the Jill. koala bear. Jill the koala. Jill's a cute name, to be honest, for a little koala. The one we met at the zoo was called Bondi, which I thought was really cute. Yeah. Um, we actually got given a little, um, a little koala teddy before we left the UK, and I named it Emmett, just because it had my initials on the front. I was like, it's got to be something M. Aww. And Will Brown, our team ops, was like, how about Emmett? And I thought, you know what? He does look like an Emmett. <laughs> More importantly, <laughs> has your mum hugged a koala bear yet? She's not yet, oh. no. I'm sure I'll be bombarded with pictures when she does, so I'll let you know when it happens. Oh. 
Everyone's been doing that, I feel. I mean, obviously being here, it's so nice to see, being able to get out and about and experience all of that. Um, the koala, that, did you, have you hooked one? Yeah, yeah we did. went to the zoo, a group of us, and oh my God, they're so soft. Like Everyone honestly, you've never saying felt that. anything yeah. so soft. I'm a little bit scared. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe I need to get over the fear. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should take a trip if you can do. Right. Like, enough so about cute. koalas. We need to know about the important stuff. Why we're here. How's training been going? It's been great. I've really, really enjoyed it. The standard's been so good. And to be fair, when we were on Sunshine Coast, the weather was unbelievable. Even cracked out a little vest. Look at them <laughs> biceps, Esme. I was going to say, I've not got the arms for the vest. Some of the other girls looked so good in them, like showing the guns off. But yeah, I thought, you know what? I'm just trying to avoid getting bad tan lines. Oh. Now, this is your first major tournament. I mean, you can see the smile on your face right there. How much are you enjoying it? I've absolutely loved it so far. It's been so much fun. And I think it only really hit me when I was stood for the anthems the other day. And obviously there's World Cup branding everywhere and there were so many England fans in the crowd. I think it only sunk in then that I was at a World Cup. Until then, I kind of just been like, oh, this is fun. Like we're on <laughs> camp in Australia. And then obviously when it came to match day, then it really hit me and I was like, wow, this is special. Oh, well, we need to confirm a couple of things. We do. Right? So the first one is... Is it Esme or Esme? It's Esme, but I don't hear the difference. My <laughs> mum, however, <laughs> my mum will be screaming if I don't say it's Esme. But oh yeah, my God. So everyone all calls me years, Esme. When you didn't listen, listen to me in training, that was why. <laughs> That's so why, Jill. The wrong there we go. I had to say this to people. I was saying, no, I, I've got to tell it off from Mum Morgan, all right, already. Oh, so no. I didn't want that to happen this year, okay? So I'm glad we've confirmed that one right That's there. That's the first thing I need to confirm. The second thing is, is it true or not that, take your mind back to the USA game, you get that all-important call from Serena. What happened? USA game? Yeah. God, I don't know. You got a call. There was a, a few rumours that were flying around a little bit that possibly you were driving and you didn't want to accept the call oh, from Serena. Oh, my first ever call. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, me and Hempo were driving to my uncle's house for tea and Serena just flashed up on my phone. I was like... I can't answer it now. I'll like, not be able to concentrate on where I'm going. So I waited until I pulled up and then answered the phone. And then I was blocking my uncle's drive and he just got home from work. So he's like flashing me in the mirror. <laughs> oh. And I couldn't shout, shut up, leave me alone for a minute on the phone to Serena. So I was just like waving at him in the window to like stop. Because I thought he's going to start beeping his horn in a minute. And oh. she'll hear on the other end. So then you fast forward to the World Cup, obviously expecting a call from Serena. <laughs> I expect you sitting by that phone. There's no way you're going to miss that call, <laughs> right? Yeah, God, I'm really not good with the phone calls. <laughs> you missed I? it again? Yeah. Honestly, Jill, I had been glued to my phone the full two hours because I got right at the end of the two hour window is when she called me. And I had a Zara delivery coming, last minute stuff for my holiday. <laughs> so I literally spent two minutes at the front door gone back into my living room and I've got a missed call and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I missed this. But luckily they rang back again a second later. And I was like, I'm so, so sorry. I was just getting a delivery. So you actually told her? You yeah. actually were honest about where you were? Yeah. Thought, I've got to explain why I missed the call up because <laughs> we'd explicitly been told you better be there at this time. Oh, wow. And obviously I wasn't because I was at the front door. <laughs> just imagine that, Serena Beeman calling up the team. I mean, she must prepare herself. She's got the list of names, all the numbers. <laughs> She must spend half the time on voicemail, especially when you're picking up deliveries <laughs> like that. Yeah. Jill, uh, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. The most important call you've missed, it could be football, could be something else. Have you ever missed one? Um, I must have missed a few off Love Island. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, must have. I think that's how I ended up in the jungle, but yeah, that's all I can think of. I mean, wrong number from ITV. There we go. There we are. All right. I miss those calls as well. All right. It's been two get Let's get back to the uh, football. All right. Uh, it's been two days since the Haiti game. Denmark up next. All attentions are obviously firmly set on that one in a few days' time. These games they come around so quickly. You're all back in preparations. Talk to me about plans for the next few days, though. Um, I think we're back in training tomorrow. We had analysis today and kind of looked back at the Haiti game and saw the little bits that we can pick up on where we can be a little bit better on and off the ball. Oh, 
bloody row book saves everything. <laughs> Don't worry, she? because look at these wow. ones. Yeah, and then Serena went offside. I was fuming. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought, do you know what? I'll just uh, throw in a few more finishes there. Watch this one. Wait for it. What? You're a defender. What? I was pleased Strike with this like one. Left foot as well. That is a great finish. So Thanks, Jill. Yeah. Speaking about the Denmark game, how are England going to approach this one? I think it's just kind of try and pick up and refine what we did for the Haiti game because there were some really good passages of play where it was like watching Barcelona or Brazil at times, obviously yeah. Lucy and Kira's influence, just popping it around in midfield and just trying to be a little bit more clinical where we can and, yeah, as I say, take that intensity into the Denmark game. Yeah, that intensity, definitely in training as well. I saw those sprints. They look definitely tough in the sunshine, but it looks like you're really enjoying yourself as well. Yeah. Even out on the pitch, of course, you want to be here and you want to be enjoying the football side of things, but what's the spirit like between the team? It's been so good. Everyone gets along so well and it's been amazing being able to have like special off-pitch moments because I think like we went whale watching and Mary Earps, bless her, I think had the best day of her life and it just really brought everyone together on that boat because we just had that amazing shared experience together and I think that's the little things off the pitch or like watching the sunset on the beach that brings you so close as a unit and it just makes it so much fun to be a part of camp and then you take that onto the training pitch, don't you, and everything just connects a little bit easier. Yeah. And I think Mary must have enjoyed that to put in that performance the other day. Definitely. It's all down to she the whale watching. She was inspired by the whale yeah, diving see, in the yeah. sea one <laughs> <watching. laughs> That'll be the headline from the show right there. That would definitely be the headline. I mean, it is amazing to see that all coming together, the spirit and the team, it feels like, as I said, you're all enjoying yourself. For you being here and being a newbie to the, the major tournaments, have you felt included in everything? Have you looked up to any of the older players and thought, oh, I need to learn from what, what you've learned in the past. Yeah, I think everyone's so welcoming and over the camps in the lead up that I've been a part of, people have been so good in kind of integrating you into the group and I'm really lucky that I've played with so many of the girls before, be it at club or in the England youth age group. So it's made it so, so easy just to settle in and it's nice to be able to hear other people's little anecdotes of tournaments gone by and bits of experience where they think they can manage certain situations better and for them to be able to pass that knowledge on to me to be able to manage myself is really special. Oh. Yeah, well, Esme, is. we've had loads of questions for you, so I need to read some out else I'll get into trouble. <laughs> so Adam Mystery got in touch to ask something that a lot of people want to know. What song do you listen to before matches? There's a few, to be fair. I love listening to Viva La Vida by Coldplay. Oh, um, yeah. we'll, we'll add it to the playlist. Yeah, okay. it just really gets me up for, uh, for games. I like Proud by Heather Small as well. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of others. The Greatest Showman's a good one. I have random stuff, though, now. Before my injury, I listened to the same, like, 10 songs before every game, but now I tend to just switch it up a bit and flick my playlist onto shuffle and whatever comes on, I'll let it take me through to the game. Oh, interesting though you mentioned 10 songs, right? Because we're going to try and whittle it down because Holly on Instagram, she asks this, if you could only listen to one song for the rest of your life, what oh, would it be? No. This is tough. That's a difficult That's question. That's really hard. Oh, I would probably go for Viva La Vida, to be fair. It just puts me in such a good mood and... It's a sort of summery, happy tune. And I went to see Coldplay live this summer and the memories are just amazing. Yeah, they are good live. One of the best bands I've seen. Yeah. So I know you've been watching Lionesses Down Under. Of course. Every single day. Every minute of it, Jill. So Love you'll that. see that we've been trying to start a Lionesses band and we've been told that Katie Zellum is the music maestro of the group. We've I thought you were going to told... say she's the singer. I thought <laughs> definitely not. Well, wait for it, wait for it. We've got Georgia Stanway as the lead singer, but we know yeah, that you can... Yeah, she's good, Jay. You can add effects and stuff no, like that. I think she's all right, to <laughs> be sure. Yeah, yeah so, something she was singing the other day, she was really good. Do you know what she does well? Nickelback. Does like she? Like that growl. Yeah, she she said that yeah. on the show. Actually, <laughs> they had yeah. it on the coach yesterday and I could hear her behind me just growling. I was like, <laughs> growling. <laughs> well, she's got the lead singer role, yeah. but we've also heard that you've got some musical talents too. Take a look at this. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the worst part? Yeah, yeah. Does uh, it get better? Oh, yeah, 
yeah, there's definitely better segments that could have been pulled out. That is mortifying. <laughs> uh, so that was you obviously playing piano. That was during lockdown. Yeah. Though. Talk to me about where you learned to play piano. Just on YouTube, like um, when I moved to City, I moved in with a host family because um, I was 16 at the time and they had this amazing grand piano because Alan, one of the house parents, is incredible. Like play him a song on your phone and he can just repeat oh, wow. it on the piano. Wow. It's amazing. So yeah, I just would get tutorials up on YouTube and I can't read music or anything. I can just like memorize where the keys are and stuff. So I learn, obviously that one I didn't learn very well, but <laughs> some of them I can do all right. Well, we didn't want to tell you, but this is your official audition oh, no. for the Lionesses <laughs> band, okay? So me and Kyle are going to be the judges. Yep. Simon Carl, you reckon? I, I think that's me. Yeah, Simon yeah, Carl. Yeah. Um, and under your seat. Oh no, you have you got a key? Have a look. Yeah, feel, God, my heart is now pounding. <laughs> side, other side. Can you find it? Speaking of grand pianos. I know, yeah, we've got our own. Oh, fabulous. So, yeah, if you just want to introduce yourself and well, we'll be the judge. Oh, gosh, I was literally, do you know, we had a piano at our last hotel and Lauren was like, Ez, why don't you go and play it? I was like, Hempo, I've not played the piano in about a year. Well, so here this we could are. be a disaster. Here we go. We don't want excuses <clears throat> before the performance. Yeah, sorry. I'll see if I can remember. What what song? Paradise. Oh, okay. All right, that's a tough oh one. My oh my god, I've got such stage fright. Let's see. Come on. <laughs> these are a bit funny. These keys. Oh, don't oh, 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 oh. <laughs> a bad a bad workman blames his tools. Right? That's, that's the saying I've always heard. All right. Right. Let's give it a go. Oh. I think okay, we need to give a clap. We need to give a clap. You know what I'm laughing at? I've never seen you nervous before a game, but I actually think your hands were yeah, shaking. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I have no nerves for football whatsoever. Put something in front of me like this. That's why I got so wrong on that video, because I was because we were streaming it live on Twitter and I think there were like 20 people watching. I was so I was anxious. One of them. Yeah, oh, thanks, Jill. Them. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Did you get in the band? I think so. Okay. I think so, yeah. You don't get Hannah Hampton on for a while then because she's actually very good at the piano. Oh, really? So I'll be kicked off, yeah. I'll oh, we'll have to put you two together then and see if we can, uh, who's the better one, have a little one, yeah? keyboard off. Yeah, I think I know we'll win that one and it's not me. Right, well, you can put the keyboard down. You can Thank rest you. and relax a little bit for now, okay? Because... Here on Lioness is Down Under, as well as obviously showcasing musical talents, we like to give players a little taste of home, don't we? Jo? Yeah, we do. We do. So, joining us on the line are a couple okay. of people that were there right from the start of your journey. Not your piano journey, your footballing <laughs> journey. So we've got father and son, Martin and John Windle, no way. who were your first football coaches at Ecclesall Rangers. Welcome, guys. How are you doing? Oh my God! Oh. Hi, yes, Hi, Hi, Martin. You do Hi, John. These, don't you? Absolutely, <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> now, Martin, I want to come to you first, all right? Because Esme joined you from a very young age, all right? The age of four, I believe. What was she like as a youngster? Um. Well, I mean, when you consider we had thirty to forty children, and Esme was Esme was the only girl in that. That, that age group with me. Um, so it, it was never a problem, but you could tell that she was different and she held her own with everything. So, I mean, it was just a case of doing what she always does, enjoy wow. football. Wow. She's always enjoyed it from a young age anyway. Yeah, and then John, you coached Esme from six to under 15s. Did you always know that she had the ability to make it this far in the game? 100%, definitely, definitely. She, you got to remember as well, she were playing on like academy surfaces and things. They were, we were stuck on boggy fields and she was there like smashing it with the boys. She, were, she was class, you could just tell straight away. Oh, well, what a picture that is as, as me grew uh, a bit older there. 
nearly as tall. You're not the tallest in there, though. I mean, that's no, surprising on that photo. That, was, that year, I only played for a grassroots girls team one year. So I used to play for them on a Saturday and then play for John's boys team on the Sunday. Oh, and boy, I look yeah. back now and I think, how the hell did I do that? Because the day after a game <laughs> nowadays, you're absolutely shattered. There's not a chance you play again the next day. But I just absolutely love playing with the lads because, as Martin said, I was there from at school when I was literally just about able to walk and we'd all be kicking around on the school field and yeah those are just the best memories I absolutely loved it. Aww. Well Martin I want to come back to you because how proud are you? I can see by the smile in your face and when you're popping up here you see what Esme's doing now. To have a player that you coach now representing England at the World Cup how special is that? It's just amazing yeah brilliant um, it couldn't happen to a nice young woman or a family. They are amazing. They are Aww. absolutely. She's brilliant. Yeah. Aww. And hopefully it's the start of in encouraging lots of other people in our club, girls in particular, to just do what uh, Esme's done. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. And John, Esme is still so young into our football and career. What kind of potential does she have? Oh, massive. Absolutely massive. She, you know, uh, like, like like my dad's just said, we're just we're just so proud of her. And as, as a club where she started, it's not just us, it's it goes through through the club. She's inspired so many, so many people and she'll carry on doing that. Um so we just, we love her to pieces. She she she's got so much potential, she's class. I love you both too. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the smile on your face, Esme. I need lovely. my tissues again. Oh yeah, I we know. do. Every show now, we do. Every show. John, I just want to come back to you, just because. I mean, you obviously have seen so many young people that want to be footballers. Obviously, you've coached Esme, who's now representing England as well. What advice would you give to any young kids that are watching, any parents as well, um, of young players that want to get out there, who want to join a team, who want to play and want to obviously fall in love with this game? Just just let them enjoy it. Let them enjoy it. Don't put too much pressure on them. Don't be like dragging them all around the country trying to get in academies and things like that. That'll, that'll come, I think, with... Um, that'll come... Um, as uh, Esme was just relaxed about it um, and took her chances when 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 they got offered to her. Um, so uh, yeah, just just be like just be like like Esme and her family. No no pressure. Enjoy it. Support. Never got any grief off her mum and dad for making bad decisions and playing her in wrong position. <laughs> the only time I got any grief was uh, was when I called her Esme right at the start. <laughs> I've had that before. I've had that before. Okay, I can relate to that one, all right. Oh. And on that note, we've got more people getting in touch wanting to ask you questions, Esme. And Sky Malone says, What was the most difficult part of your journey to becoming a professional football player? I always feel like I've been so lucky because it has been really easy and relatively plain sailing and thanks to people like Martin and John who just made it the norm for me to play with the boys I was able to do what I loved and what I enjoyed um, for as long as I could really and then I took the opportunity to come for trials at City and luckily enough got in but I really just played wherever I enjoyed it with whoever I enjoyed it which was at Ecclesaw Rangers so I never really had any major setbacks until my injury last year so I feel really really lucky in that sense that I kind of had it so easy coming all the way through the youth age groups and into a senior setup. Oh, it's amazing isn't it and you guys have been a massive part of that journey and I'm sure you'll continue to be part of the journey. Martin final question Friday the Lionesses take on Denmark It'll be early in the morning in the UK. Where are you watching the game? Um, well, I'll be watching it. Yeah, where, where are you watching it? Are you going to be having a brew at home watching it? I'll, I'll be watching it. Whereabouts? I can't hear it. Pardon? Whereabouts? At home. Oh, oh, there we go. There we are. We're a brew yeah. and his breakfast and we watch it home. Oh. Well, thank you to both of you. It's been lovely to have you on Lionesses Down Under and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Pleasure. Cheers. Thank well done, you, Ben. Thank Good luck, Esme. Thanks, guys.
Oh, look at the smile oh. on your face. That was amazing. That's so sweet. Oh. I feel so warm. Oh. Love that. Right, well, we've got plenty more messages, lots of support yes. coming in for you as well, Esme, oh, as well. So, Jill, wow. take it away. So many questions every single time. So, Kylie Hornby asks, what is it that keeps you motivated when the game needs turning around? So, if you're up against someone who's proven a little bit trickier than you maybe expected going into the game. I think I'm a very, very competitive person. So if someone's got the better of us, I'm desperate to kind of turn it round and get back on top. And I think you learn the most when you're struggling a bit. And I think those are the things that make you more resilient and kind of help you in future difficult situations because you know you can turn it round, you know you can come out of the other side of it. And everyone loves a challenge. So it's almost nice to have someone coming up against you. It makes life difficult. You really want to see, you just want to nail them, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> slide and tackle, nail them and get on with the game. So Elise also got in touch on Insta and wants to know, what keeps you so happy? You always seem so bubbly. What's the secret? I don't know. I tend to just wake up like this. Like <laughs> I woke up like this. Yeah. I woke up like this. You can join a band. Oh, there we go. Second backup singer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely backup. No, I don't know. I think I just I wake up in the morning on a good level. Like something would have to happen in a bad way to like bring me down. Yeah. Would, my baseline is higher than. A lot of people, I guess. I don't know. Okay, so also perfect treats. I don't know if this is a dog that's some somehow so. it it must be, yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wants to know if you could play with any past player, who would it be? Past player. <coughs> Are you counting no. nowadays, Jen? <laughs> She's already done that. She's done that. Oh, I don't know, you know. I got asked the other day about a load of American legends who've been so successful and I had to admit like I'd never really seen them play because my first experience of women's football was around London 2012 when you guys were playing for Team GB. Um, but I'd probably have to go a Mia Hamm or someone like that, yeah. someone who's so well known yeah. um, as a legend of the game. That's a great shout. And last one, Kira on Insta has a cheeky question. Oh, Who no. is your favourite presenter, oh. Jill or Kyle? Oh, no, you can't do that to me. I can't. I've known you a very long time. I've known you a very long time as well, Jill, but me and Kyle got, became friends last summer. Oh, yeah, we took the Euros cool. together. We travelled the UK watching <laughs> you, so... I'm trying to decide who's going to hate me more right now. <laughs> no, I'm, right. I'm used to it on this trip. Everyone loves Jill. Okay, uh, Jill. So I'm used to it. It's, it's, all right. it's fine. It's okay. You're definitely the best presenter. No, no. Also. We'll, we'll give that to Kyle. She's new to the game. <laughs> all right, okay. Well, we've got my favourite part of the show all right because as i always say we get to take two minutes off and we throw things to you why is that okay. well we've got these envelopes filled with questions all right from all of your teammates they're all anonymous from my team yeah they've written them all down <laughs> for all right. me yeah well we don't know they're for everyone all so right. you'll get to pick <laughs> one of them only one open it up Ooh. read it out okay and then you'll be able to answer one of your teammates questions all right so you get the choice in this one I'm going straight for the middle. Okay, oh. all right. So open it up. What's the question say? It's all on you, Esme. Oh, yeah. I know. Do you feel like you can have a breather now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might get a cup Take of tea. Take back <laughs> seat. Milk one sugar. What is the wallpaper on your phone? I think the lock screen is... Oh, you've got different. Oh, yeah, okay. I've got different ones. The lock screen is Havar, um, where I went this summer with Sandy and Hempo, just the harbour. It's just I so, so said pretty. you said then. No, I was like, what was referee? No, Havar, Croatia. Yeah, it's very nice. I don't know yeah. how to say yeah, it. It's yeah. stunning. And then... My actual, actually, it's a bit cringy. My actual wallpaper. No, come on, come on. <laughs> Everything stays in house. Don't um, worry. No one's watching. It's a bouquet of flowers that my boyfriend bought me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's really cringy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've got to move on. Yeah. Sorry, I can't I, give her that one. Can I just say I took quite an artsy picture of it, though, so it actually looks quite cool. Like it's not just the flowers. It, okay. It's quite an artsy picture. Is he in the picture? No, it's just the flower. Like it looks cool. I'll to show you after okay i can't give her that i can't give her it. <laughs> now esme we've seen that you're competitive with the dart yeah. so we thought we'd put you to the test are you up for being the first ever player to face do 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 the tower the tower i'm ready jill right well here's a little <laughs> explainer of how the game works 
The player will have 30 seconds to carefully remove blocks and place them on top of the tower. The more blocks you move, the taller the tower and the more points you score. Five points are awarded for each complete level built during the 30 seconds. Look out for the special golden blocks hidden in the tower that are worth an extra 10 points if you can stack them in time. But be very careful, because if you fumble, the tower will tumble and you'll score zero points. So Lionesses, are you ready to face the tower? So Esme, this is the tower. You've got 30 seconds to build it as high as you can, two blocks at a time. If you want to stop at any point, just say freeze. But come on, that'd be boring. It would, yeah. But I'm very clumsy. Oh, this could make it even better, all right. Yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling? Do you think you've got a strategy in there, possibly? What was it five points for a level? Yeah, so you've yes. got okay. two on there. You can see there's some golden uh, bricks in oh, there. Yeah, I can see if the one of those ones. levels includes a golden brick, you get 10 points. Right. All right. You okay. only get 30 seconds, though. But the best news is, You'll be top of the leaderboard because... No matter what. You're the first person to do it, all right? i for a day. Okay, you ready to go? Yeah. Right, let's get 30 seconds on the clock. We'll get out of your way. Three, two, one, go. Go right. on, Esme. Go oh, on. Okay. Oh, God, to... none of them are very loose No, here. they're not. We made it very difficult, all right? Because it's so... brand new, that's why. There we go. Okay, oh, so you need to get one more for five points. I want a golden one. She's gone straight for the golden one. <laughs> okay, 10 <laughs> points on the board already. Go on, Esme. Come on. Is okay. it two per level? Or yeah, two, two per, per level. level. If you'd listen to Jill's clear Sorry. instructions <laughs> before. Sorry. Five, oh, no. four, Goals three, two. Please get one more. No. You've got 15 go points, go, can go, you? Go. Oh. Did you make it? In time. We'll Come let on. you off. Let's yeah, we will. Goals. Okay, so oh. that's, you got 10, 5 and 10, 25 points in total, but we need to measure it as well right. to see. Let's oh, wow. get the measurement tape out. <laughs> now, I know you're really competitive, so I'm calling that at 105. You have a little check. Are you yeah. happy with that? Is that okay? Yeah, 105. 105, right, okay. okay. 105. We'll right. I did my golden pieces. Yeah, so 25. Look, you are competitive. <laughs> Look at that. 105. Right. right, 25 points and 105. So we'll get that one I'll on the leaderboard right, right there, okay? I mean, you're the first to do it. Five. Any tips for any of your teammates that are. 25, was it? 25. 25. I think you need to find the loose ones a bit quicker than I did. I did okay. a few prods first. And then just go for it. Right, well, they've watched you do it now. So you, you're at the top of the leaderboard. But will that get beaten? 25 points. Oh, we'll have look at to you. See. You're on there. You're on there. And nobody goes away from the tower empty handed. You know I am your biggest fan. Thanks, Jilly. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. So I want you to keep you this know, forever. It's a shame we didn't get this in Brisbane because it was boiling there, wasn't it? Yeah. You've got it now. Yeah. All You've right, got it hopefully now. we'll be back in Br Brisbane. Thanks for being such a good sport. Thanks thank for getting involved in this. You played piano. We've surprised you with some guests as well. So we need a massive round of applause. Everyone in Woo! the studio. Woo! There's me Morgan right there. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. I mean, wow. What a show. I know. So that's all the shenanigans for today's show. We we'll hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did, didn't we? I we did. definitely did. In did. The new studio. It's yes. lovely. Great little home for you guys. It is indeed. And we'll be back tomorrow. And we'll be joined by Ellie Roadbook, all right? Another Sheffield girl on the, on the yeah. show, all right? I'm looking forward to that one. Plus, we've got a little surprise for her as well. So if she's watching, she'll see this. If not... It will be a surprise. Karen Bardsley will be dropping into the studio. Karen Bardsley's oh. going to be She's here. She's going to be here. Yes. Yeah, I don't say I don't treat you okay, Jill. <laughs> She'll yes. be here tomorrow as well. So please make sure you get your questions into them both at hashtag lionesses down under. And also, let us know what you think about our new gaff. Yeah, definitely do. You can catch us on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter as well. And as Jill said, use that hashtag Lionesses down under. We want to hear from you ahead of today, tomorrow's show, I should say. That will be with you at 12.30 and we'll see you then.